You were probably really sad that it died, so you're probably- Why do you think that matters, though? Yeah. <laughs> because he was your pet, and you spent a lot of years with him. Ooh. I can't imagine eating your own pet. So what about, like, some random so person? Love, let it be one with you. Wait, but if you're if you want to eat your cat, like it's apparently Aiden or zero zero said it was a uh, free food and everyone likes free food. Well, if you just were walking around the sidewalk, you saw a piece of rot, you saw a rotten tomato on an apple with a giant worm in it. And would That's you pick the worm free. out and then would you pick the worm out and then eat it? It's free food. <laughs> We're well, let's assume that it's safe to eat, too. Wait, uh, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Dying. Are we assuming that we're, like, uh, like what what social economic status are we in? Like, are we, like, um, super rich? Are we, are we, like, poor? Are we, like, really desperate for food? Let's pretend like, that we're not desperate for food. Because there's but, one hand, like, right now, we're just uh, in our homes. We have a lot of uh, stuff inside a refrigerator. Then there's, like, you're stranded on an island and your cat just died. Okay, that's a good point. So I guess I'm not, I wasn't being clear on that, but I can see why that would make a difference. So like, are you, like, would it save your life? Or are you just eating it because you can? Okay. Um, hear me? Go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. So does it like matter or, uh, uh, is there like a set scenario for this? Um, I mean, no, it was just a question that John Green raised, and what you said is definitely like something that could make a difference. Because if can I ask like, you a when my uh, socio how is it different than finding a perfectly healthy that? squirrel on the ground that's dead and looks like food? Would you um, eat that? It feels perfectly edible, and you were poor, and you had no. I mean, money. yeah, that's why we're having the discussion, right? We're trying to figure out if it would be okay to you eat, eat that. Goldfish. Uh, okay, right now, if you found a squirrel and you're like free food and. Just pick up the squirrel on the ground and... That's weird. I mean, not really. Imagine if you have no food. No, and but... You, your cat dies. No, but... And it's no, it's not. We have it's no food. It's yummy. Yeah, yummy, we're not... Yummy, yummy. Okay, if we're assuming that, uh, 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 that we have enough money to afford, uh, philosophy lessons, uh, then I would say that, uh, uh, you, you shouldn't eat your cat because... Why would you? Yeah, but cats might be tasty. I know. Okay, anyway, right? they might the point of tasty. that question was just to, um, I'm going to move on really quick like, because num, num, num. there's more interesting stuff that we have to tackle. But that was kind of just to get y'all thinking. So the first main question that we have to ask ourselves when we're talking about animal rights is what exactly makes animals different? Like, as John Green said, like, a cat maybe is different because, um, like, you think it's cute or because you knew it but why does that matter and are there any other differences that might be more important so i gave some examples here like for example some commonly cited ones might be intelligence or their capability to suffer or stuff like that so do you agree with any of these and if not what else what do you guys think um makes it different i i think it consciousness matters the most and like Intelligence also does. Okay, and why do you think that? Your cat's, your cat's um, tasty. Well, and definitely suffering I'll give because you a choice. Just eat the cat. Who's who's saying that? Hmm? Oh, oh, um. Anyway. Hmm. Lots of people typing in the chat. Um. So someone says just the fact that they're not humans. Okay, I mean, but the que that's the question, right? I mean, I don't think that human is a trait. Like, being human is a combination of di many different traits, I'd say. Um, I mean, I guess you can make that argument, though. So I see your point. Um, so Maris asks, you eat because you need to be alive. So right now we're assuming that, right now we're not talking about eating animals. We're just talking about whether or not they should have rights. And when we're talking about rights, um, we mean general things such as we're not talking about things like the right to vote. More, we're talking about their ability to be included in our moral considerations. So that's a very vague term, I know, but that's essentially the essence of what we're debating about. Okay, sorry, want, I get that wrong they, point. If they want the same rights, they have to fight for. They have to fight us for the, their rights. 
I don't, like I don't think that would be a very popular viewpoint. <laughs> oh, so, sorry, I got a wrong topic today because everybody seems to talk about it. I eat my cat, I eat my dog, I eat my dog, and I eat my pants, and so on. You know, they're chatting online, so I got a wrong point, sorry. Oh, yeah, that, that was, we're not discussing about eating your cat anymore. We moved on from that discussion. Excuse I'm me. I'm pretty sure most of us are lying about eating our cats and dogs. <laughs> I know. Okay, go ahead, Austin. No, no, I'm, just Wait, saying, I'm pretty sure most of them are lying. Oh, oh sorry. Eating. Who was the other person that had a point? Well, I have a question. Wait, so like, by rights, does it mean the right not to be in it be, be forced to be a pet, which is kind of like slavery? Um. Well, by right, I mean there's a lot of different rights. We could talk about that as one of the rights, though. So yeah, sure. Isn't being a horse or like, basically slavery? Because like, or, or be forced to live that. in a zoo. Yeah, you could argue both of those things definitely. So that's why it's important to ask, right? Because, like, things like keeping animals as pets and eating animals are so ingrained to our culture that it's hard to have a discussion on this. Which is why I think this is a very interesting thing to discuss. Um, so someone says they don't suffer as much. So yeah, suffering is definitely one of the um more prevalent distinctions that people make. Um, okay, does anyone else have any other things from these? Like what other traits do you guys think are more important than these or equally important um, that makes animals different than humans? Um, that he, maybe that humans are humans are also animals, and that like animals existed before humans, maybe. That's a lie. Like, but animal and human, they have the same ancestor. Yeah, which is a bacterium or something. No, okay, so not. you think I that mean, animals definitely okay. existed before humans? It's something smaller. And humans are animals. Yeah, that's why that's why we're asking what makes. Sorry, I should have phrased this question into what makes animals different from, what makes non-human animals different from humans. That's what I meant to phrase this question as. Someone says animals don't have culture. That's how about what? One. What makes humans different? Well, th that's the same question, right? <laughs> what dominated makes the world. Different? So yeah, why do you think? What do you think makes humans different then? Did I know uh, that someone said humans are gods? Oh my god, that, that's ridiculous too. <laughs> I, think uh, I, think I think it's I mean, we are creating life now, like cloning. What were we saying? Someone was talking? I think it's because humans are super intelligent and they keep no, getting no, more. No, but like, isn't and cloning like, creating life? They get inventions and then they get even more inventions and then they get iPhones and stuff. So you think that intelligence uh, no, is a bit different not. factor? I, I agree maybe, with that. Well, maybe, maybe. I, let's say, I even if there are animals that are smarter than humans, let's just say, like, if, but still, hu like, okay, so they're smarter, but, like, does it matter, though? Instead, well, it like, ends up, like, for example, like, at that time, let's just say some animal was, like, smarter than gorillas or something, but somehow the humans took over the world and the other animals didn't, which kind of makes different, like, smarter, I guess? Yo, dude, so you how, think how do you describe it? In general? Maris, go ahead. Uh, how, do you, how do you describe the smart? Maybe you can survive in the jungle, but uh, the lions, the tigers, they can survive in the jungle, but you can't. So which one is smart? You survive, you not survive, that survive. Well, you, that. Well, They're you, smart. The lions and tigers didn't start building giant buildings, inventing new things or doing anything. No, I they mean. Did. They did all types of things and like they made new stuff, they built stuff, but no other animal did. No, I mean the I mean jungle, they are smart. And uh, it's not all the fans uh, you know. I think you got something wrong. There, your ability to survive in a jungle doesn't dictate on how smart you are. Like you're in the jungle. Yeah, so like, the lion would outlast you. Not dictated by, by your ability to you know, 
Get hold on, out. hold on. One sec, one sec. I'm going to jump in. Um, okay, first of all, please don't talk over each other or mock each other. That's not nice. Um, second of all, addressing someone's question about um, surviving in the jungle doesn't mean intelligence. That's true, but when we talk about intelligence, we're not just talking about like ability to do well in a test. We're just talking about intelligence in general. And so that encompasses, once again, a lot of things like surviving in a jungle or like building societies. But lions are better at surviving the jungles because they adapted to the jungle. Yeah. There. I choose build, building societies rather than surviving well, in the jungle. like hu humans, yeah, but, yeah, they don't, but the point is, like you say that, like, well, lions are more intelligent because they can survive in the jungle. Well, technically, human, why, a lion, yes, a lion would outlast a human in the jungle. But what? But the human doesn't need to go to the jungle. It can just stay in the like safe place and build stuff. And plus, if a if a like man actually wanted to go, like someone actually wanted to live in the jungle, he just bring some like guns or stuff, and they would survive technically. A lot of like water, food, blah blah blah. They would survive. No, my friend, surviving isn't that easy. You have to do. What's more, is germs. Maris, what were you going to say? Oh, Let Maris talk. Did you survive in Maris the jungle before? Thank you for the tip. You know, uh, you, you oh. said that animals don't have to go to the jungle. Human not go, uh, not have to go to the jungle. So animals not no don't have to go to the cities too. So in the different ways, they have the different ways of the smart. It doesn't mean the human you can make your cell phone, make your iPhone. We can make a call. We can um, use the tools. That doesn't mean we are smart. Because in this way, we do smart, but in other way, like surviving the jungle, we do not smart. The animals smart than us. Okay, just I'm to, about wait, 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 let me talk really quick, and then I'll call Anthony, who has his hands up. Um, remember that we're not talking about if humans are smarter than non-human animals. We're just talking about whether or not intelligence is a factor in deciding if animals or who should have rights. So Anthony, what were you going to say? You have your hand raised. Okay, uh, I honestly don't think that intelligence should be a factor because, like, for example, uh, if there's, like, robots that are, like, a lot more intelligent than us, and, like, uh, does that, does that make them better, does that make them better so that they can, like, rule over us, they can, like, just, you know, when we die, uh, they can, like, uh, do stuff with our bodies or something like that? Yeah, sure. maybe not. That would be an interesting question. And on the other side of that too, right? If someone is like mentally disabled, um, well, we still could like we still like swat flies. Like they're like nothing. Like they're just annoying pests. But they still have like lives and stuff. They were just like flying around and and there's no really any other reason why to kill a fly than uh it's annoying and uh it's it's uh dumb. Okay, Anthony, let me just ask you this then. Um, so do you think that there's no morally significant differences or do you think something else should be the difference? Uh, I'm not sure, maybe something else that's... Okay, okay, fair enough. Anyone have any last thoughts on this question? Um, so, well, never mind. Can we move oh, okay. on? Okay, yeah, let's move on. So we were actually covering some of these. Um, since we're actually, we spent too, uh, too much time on that, I'm gonna skip over these. And now we're gonna talk about a specific type of right. So before we were talking about animal rights vaguely, which might be hard to discuss, but now we're gonna actually talk about a specific cultural phenomenon. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is bullfighting. We're gonna evaluate whether or not animals have the right to be exempt from like bullfighting and to live at life without human interference. Um, so I'll read this out loud. Um, if you just read it on the screen. Bullfighting has its roots in rituals dating back many centuries. In its modern Spanish style, bullfighting first became a prominent cultural event in early 18th century. Some people consider bullfighting a cruel sport in which the bull suffers a severe and torturous death. Many animal rights activists often protest bullfighting in Spain and other countries, citing the needless endangerment of the bull and bullfighter. To other people, Bullfighting is not mere sport. The event is not only culturally significant, but also a fine art in which the bullfighter is trained in a certain style and elicits emotions through the act of the fight. Some argue that training the, tra the fighting bull lives four to six years, while most meat cows live only one to two years. 
In addition, those years are spent free roaming. Others argue that the death of a bull in a ring is more humane than the death of animals in a slaughterhouse. So the question is, should bullfighting be allowed? And should animals have the right to not be forced into bullfighting? So, let's see. One says, they're born to die. Okay. Uh, hmm. So, what do you think that should... How do you think that should be applied to this argument? I can I see that helping like, both sides. But I think like like the the it's the same thing with with milk cow with ca- milk cows and with cows and bulls and ch- bull, bulls and chickens and stuff. They're all born to die, which is kind of sad. So you think that it's bad to have someone that's born to die? They're like they're destined to be killed by a human. Like, it's just kind of... Okay, I see. Really. We are supposed to die too. Why are we buying phones and computers and other stuff if we're just going to die? That's the same argument you're using. Well, well not necessarily. Like, I think that... That way, then you're going to die one day, so why do, might as well just die now. I think the difference between that and what you're saying is there's a difference between living a life according to your own accord doing things that you want to do, and then dying, and, and then what animals are going through, which is, like, getting up every morning and eating some stuff and pooping some stuff and dying. Like, there's a slight difference between those two types of dying, I guess, even though dying is ultimately in- inevitable. Immortality. So, let's see. PY says they are living things too. Okay, yeah, that's definitely the... Um, the popular argument. If a bull forced you into a bullfight and die, would you like it? Yeah, so that's why a lot of people say, like, the only reason that we're supporting bullfighting is because we're the humans. Like, if we were the bulls, then what would we do, right? Well, like, I don't think bullfighting should be allowed because technically, you just, like, get a bull, okay, so it lives longer, but, like, it just, like, the bull, well, if you think that it should live longer, then might as well just, like, let it, like, live in the wild or something. If you were like, oh my god, it lives long, okay, then, well, might as well just let it live in the wild. Also, bullfighting is, like, it's kind of just for entertainment, and it's, like, not very nice to do that. Mm, okay, so there were, I guess there were two aspects to your response. First, you talk about um, the fact that, I mean, it's better just to let them free. But that's actually an interesting question, right? Because sure, we could condemn bullfighting, but doesn't that mean that before, that, doesn't that mean that we're being hypocrites because what we're doing to bulls is worse by killing them in a slaughterhouse in one to two years? And then we'll address the second part of your question later because that's actually something I'm planning to talk about. That actually? Well, like, well, bullfighting is that you... The point is, like, it says it's more humane in the rain. Yeah, okay, so that's true. But still, like, might as well just let them free. Also, by the way, if you're, you're saying that, like, the slaughterhouse, like, why would you do that? Because, like, technically, humans need it. Well, that's not, I mean, there's no. definitely been studies that show that humans can live on a vegetarian diet. Um, so... I don't think that strict humans strictly like biologically lean it, but you could definitely make the argument that like it's integral to our culture. Well, if they say it's cultural significant to bullfight, well, why can't everyone else say it's culturally significant to, like, I don't know, eat? Yeah, they could. That's why the debate is so complicated. If you stop eating, well, if you stop eating cows now and just like let them all in the wild, there are probably there are there are like the food, the food chain would get disrupted because of like all the like extra cows that are released, and then the like all the grass in the like forest and stuff would be eaten, and more animals would die because of that. And technically, okay, sure. I mean, that's definitely a practical consideration, but what if that didn't happen? Because, I mean, obviously no one says we should just release everything to the wild. The question is, should we gradually stop this thing to prevent this in the future?
one says philosophy breaks his brain. <laughs> well, tell me if you have 